Welcome to Naked Spirituality, a video blog series of Sacred Attention Therapy and the Center for Human Awakening. My name is Rob Meager. For more information about Sacred Attention Therapy, the Center for Human Awakening, and our video blog series, please visit our website at www.centerforhumanawakening.com. And center is spelled C-E-N-T-E-R. These video blogs support one of the center's core activities, which is collaboration and partnership with individuals, communities, and healing centers practicing personal growth and spiritual development. And our guest today is Doug Rose, and we will be talking with Doug about his healing work. And I'd now like to invite Doug to come on screen. Hello, Hello there, Doug. Thanks for good to see you again, as always. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me today. Well, I didn't know the show was going to be called Naked Spirituality or I've taken my clothes off ah. before. Right. <laughs> well, it's equally good that you're in the form that you are. I suppose. <laughs> now, Doug, many people also know you as Tenzin, or for short, Ten. Now, right. what should I call you during this interview, Doug or Ten? Yeah. Actually, nobody's called me Doug for about 30 years now. Everybody calls me Ten or Tenzin, and over the last couple of years, Lama Tenzin, because now they made me one of those. And uh, so, but Ten, Ten is pretty much what I'm called by everybody. Yeah. How'd that name come about, Ten? Uh, it started with an, an initiation. I mean, when you go through certain Buddhist rituals, and this happened in 1981, I believe, uh, you go through certain Buddhist rituals and they give you a Tibetan name. And uh, they always give you a name to live up to. It's always something, you know, they never call you like idiot who pukes on his own shoes or bozo who walks into walls. It's always something that you're supposed to aspire to. And it's a very good mechanism, really. Mine means the activity of the Buddha teaching. It's actually Tenzin Karma Trinley is okay. the whole thing. And it means the activity of the Buddha teaching. And there's really only so much of an idiot you can be walking around with a name like that. It's a really good device to remember to like behave yourself uh, in a manner that you would like to behave yourself. It's something to aspire to. So I kept the name. But obviously, Tenzin Karma Trinley is a bit long to ask anybody to pronounce. <laughs> so we just go with the 10 part, and I know what the rest means. Now, you talked about walking around with that name, and this is something that you've done in a very interesting way for more than 40 years around America, specifically your website describing um, that you've hitchhiked around America for 40 years. and. Can you share with us what's that journey been about? Why hitchhike around America for 40 years? Well, that's an awful long story. It's about 400 pages worth in the book, <laughs> Fearless Puppy on American Road, really, uh, which I'm trying to sell the two books I've written, Fearless Puppy on American Road and Reincarnation Through Common Sense. And all the profits from the book sales go to you know, Dharma causes. But uh, there's about 80 little chapters in there, so I can't tell you what the whole trip was all about in the time that we have here. But it was a wonderful thing. I started out, luckily, in the late 60s. Uh, I don't think this would be possible nowadays. There's not that trusting climate right. in this country. Uh, back then, every Volkswagen van was a guaranteed ride in a rolling party. People would pick you up. There was a spirit in America of we're getting things done, we're moving in the right direction, and there was a camaraderie involved in that spirit. Civil rights, women's rights, gay rights, this rights, that, any rights you can think of, mm -hmm. were in a great deal of progress back then. And there was this spirit of hopefulness, which unfortunately has to a large extent been replaced by a spirit of fear and suspicion in our culture. And so I don't know if I could have done what I did, you know, uh, if I started out as a 15 year old runaway drug dealer from Brooklyn today, as opposed to back then. Right. Uh, 
Now, Ten, was that nomadic existence, was it out of necessity or was it out of desire? Uh, it was out of, it started out of confusion. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was an abused child, a drug dealer on the streets of Coney Island in Brooklyn, and I was in my early and mid-teens. And, uh, you know, I started all this at about 12 or 13. By 15, it became pretty obvious that death was right around the corner here. Mm. And, uh, so I just got out on the road, stuck my thumb out and took off and figure any, you know, it's like the old Steely Dan song. Any world that I'm welcome to is better than the one I come from. Uh, but as things progressed, the rides got to be so good because, again, there was that spirit. It was a different time back then. Uh, and and it got to be so good that I couldn't see stopping. And then after a while, I, it just kept going out of a real desire to do it, as opposed to that I I have to get out of here kind of thing that it started as, you know. Right. Yeah. Now, if it's possible for you to encapsulate that forty-year journey, that forty-plus-year journey. Uh, what could you say you learned from that his, hitchhiking adventure? What did I learn? Right, there's another 400 pages for you. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's uh, a lot to put into a short sentence here. But I guess uh, human beings are pretty variable. They're base. I think people are basically nice. They mean well, and given the opportunity, will do well. Uh, they're also easily intimidated. I've seen people turn, as hitchhiking is a perfect example, nobody will pick you up nowadays as compared to what it was back then. And there are no more lunatics out on the road than there were back then. It's just that the media has instilled this consciousness of fear as opposed to a consciousness of love and hope in there into the minds of people, you know, and everything is all about selling it to you instead of, I don't know, it's just a, a whole different atmosphere, which um, obviously a lot of people are working to overcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, but uh, yeah, I think what I learned is that people can bounce back from anything. And I think this culture in this country can bounce back from what, they have over, you know, what they've had to deal with during the past several decades. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we were we were truly great at one time. It's gone quite a bit downhill now, but uh, we were truly great at one time. And I think uh, we can be truly great again as a culture, as a species. There's no question. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, no limit to what humanity can do. Uh, we have this super computer of a body which most of us are operating as if uh, we were blacksmiths instead of computer technicians. So that's not working out exceptionally well for a lot of people as uh, epidemics of cancer and heart disease and all kinds of stuff from people misusing the equipment that we were originally given. Hmm. But uh, there is a lot of education coming out now. Look at how many hmm. more yoga centers and how many more health food stores and herbal places there are now than there were, you know, even just 20 or 30 years ago. Hmm. So as people start paying more attention to both their physical and mental well-being, hmm and realizing that that's what wealth is. Wealth isn't accumulated toys and funds, it's well-being. Because look at all the miserable rich people. I mean, that's a lot of what happened in this country is that kids looked at the folks who were supposed to be supposedly successful, mm -hmm. you know, were defined as successful by the society. And you see these people are miserable. Now they're always walking around with sour faces. Yeah, they got a million dollars in the bank, but they have a heart attack at 40. They're miserable all their lives. You hear them yelling at their families and their families yelling back at them. And, and they, you know, a lot of people just figured, well, success is nonsense. 
And that's, that's the death of a culture right there. If you get the idea that success is a bad thing, well, uh, what direction is left for you to go in? Mm -hmm. But uh, I think, again, there's certain areas in which these things are already turning around mm -hmm. in the right direction. And in certain other areas where certainly we're all on the way to reaching critical mass where something is going to give mm -hmm. and it's going to turn over, I believe, in the, yeah. in, in the right direction. So, yeah, so I guess I came up with more of an answer than I thought. But, <laughs> all right. but if I had to come up with one thing uh, from that whole experience of the 40 years, yeah. it's that people are very varied and... Uh, and resilient and that the potential of humanity whether it's ever realized or not is another question but the potential of humanity really is equal to all the things we've heard about a heaven somewhere else the potential of humanity is certainly hmm. is to be able to make that right here hmm. now doug you've already mentioned i'll back up 10 You've already mentioned. I've, I've had in, in, in the past a habit of referring to you as Doug. I've, I've now got to. I've now got to put. Yeah, it's not your fault because on all the official documents and channels and everything, sure. I do have the name that was on the birth certificate just for official reasons. So if anybody hits the Facebook or the, you know, reads a blurb or whatever, it's going to say Doug there. So that's yeah. you know. It's nobody's fault that that happens too often. <laughs> now, you've already mentioned this book, Fearless Puppy on American Road. And, and in this book, you chronicle this journey across America. Right. What would you else would you like us to know about this book? What else would you like to share about this book? Well, uh, this book and part of that journey was uh, when I stopped hitchhiking about a decade or a decade and a half ago and started flying a little bit more. I mean, before then it was strictly hitchhiking and I've still never driven a car. But I actually got on a plane, went to Thailand and lived in a Buddhist temple there for a half a year. And the second book is Reincarnation Through Common Sense. Mm -hmm. Both books are actually a fundraising project. They're not really books. I mean, I'm not a writer. I accidentally, it seems, the books have a lot of five-star reviews on Amazon. So it, thinks, it seems like I've accidentally written a couple of really good books, according to what folks think. But uh, that wasn't the purpose. The whole idea of the thing is to raise funds to sponsor wisdom professionals and wisdom teachers, beginning with, but certainly not exclusive, to Buddhist monks and nuns. Mm -hmm. um, the point being that anybody who has read a newspaper recently knows that what we're lacking in the world is wisdom. There's a surfeit of greed and stupidity and selfishness and a whole bunch of other things that we won't want to get into here. Uh, there's also a good deal of kindness, but that, you know, and love and, and, and wonderful things going on they don't get publicized as much. And just that in itself shows the lack of wisdom in our culture. Because if we were thinking, we'd be, you know, publicizing the good stuff as much. I mean, 90% of life is the Boy Scout helping an old lady across the street. It's not the guy coming from your back to mug you and stab you or anything. So uh, we've over-exaggerated that negativity. And I think the solution to that is an increase in wisdom right uh you can be smart clever crafty all these things and still step on 20 homeless people on your way to the country club for a benefit for golfers without clubs or something you know <laughs> but you can't be wise and do that it's not within the parameters because loving kindness and wisdom are wrapped in the same skin hmm. the whole idea of all this is to promote more wisdom and to raise funds to promote more wisdom. And that's what the books are about. They're, that's not what the books are about. The books are about my personal journey. Right. But uh, the uh, books are really a, a project to raise funds. All the sale, all the money from the sales of the books are going to go for that purpose, to help sponsor mm -hmm. to fund the increase of wisdom. 
Uh, the books themselves, I'm told, have a lot of wisdom as stuff. And I'm, I'm not surprised, not that I'm too damn bright, but I know I've been lucky to have a whole lot of really good teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I introduce folks to these uh, during the course of the books. Some are Tibet lamas, some more Native American wise men, some are hookers and winos mm -hmm. and thieves. I mean, you can, you can learn from anything if you have a mind to. I mean, I really believe that the quality of attention paid by the student is a lot more important than who the teacher is. You know, because you could be sitting there with the Dalai Lama. If you're thinking about balancing your checkbook, you're not going to learn anything. <laughs> Whereas you can be sitting there with a wino, and if you're focusing on what there is in the core of that human being that is worth knowing, mm -hmm. you can learn a lot. Mm -hmm. so, um, the, the books are, like I said, they got a lot of five-star reviews on Amazon. I, mean, I don't know anything about marketing, so... I'm not selling a ton of them, but that's another interesting thing. There's a brand new website and a whole new campaign going on. I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico right now, and I'm going to start hitting the streets pretty soon with posters and cards and uh, doing little podcasts. And, um, I'm going to call them uh, free advice from the ignorant. <laughs> and uh, I'll sit out there with a sign, and anybody who wants free advice from an ignorant person can come ask me, and I'll give them all the advice they want, and then we'll make podcasts about it. It should end up being pretty funny. But uh, the new website is uh, fearlesspuppy.info, I N F O, and uh, all the information's on there, other interviews and. Uh, newspaper articles, t sample chapters from the book, okay. and, uh, from both books, and of course information about the project itself and what we're trying to do. Okay. With, yeah. Now you mentioned the website, uh, ten uh, www dot fearlesspuppy dot info. Is there also an email address people could use to reach out to you? Certainly, you can. Uh, Get there. You can get to me through. The, there's, a, I think it's Fearless Puppy Ten at Gmail. That's on the website. Okay. Also, if you want to reach me at my personal site, it's Jabuda Thirteen, J A H B U D D H A Thirteen at Hotmail dot com. So either of those is good. You can go to the website and find the contact email address right there. Okay. That's the fearless puppy 10 at Gmail and, uh, or use the job to 13 one at Hotmail. Wonderful. Thanks so much, 10. We'll make sure that both, well, all the website, um, address and both of the emails are in the scrolling credits at the end. Oh, great. Thank you very much. It's good to see you live and in person. We've been bouncing back and forth on the Facebook for a long time, but we haven't had a real talk like this for must be four or five years by now. Indeed. I'm so glad we've been able to have the opportunity to share. The pleasure is mine, brother. I hope to see you again real soon. Thanks, Ten. Bye-bye. Right. Be well.